Welcome to a new episode of the podcast, Vox Agent is made by AI, for business executives that work with AI. Okay, let's dive into something truly fascinating today, from the uh, the real cutting edge of AI. Google DeepMind's AlphaVol, we're doing a deep dive based on a pretty detailed report they've put out, giving us a look you know, under the hood. Yeah, and what's really interesting about AlphaVolve right off the bat is it's not just an AI using algorithms someone else wrote. It's actually designed to discover new algorithms and improve existing ones. It's kind of like AI inventing its own tools. And this report, our source material, gives us the tech details and some, uh, frankly, quite surprising early results. Right, so our mission today is to really get our heads around how this thing works, what's it already done. Some of these results are genuinely eye-opening. And uh, how is it different from other AI systems you might know? And currently, what could it mean for you, for your work, your business? Well, at its core, the concept is pretty elegant, actually. It takes principles that are, you know, kind of like natural selection, but applies them to code, to lines of software. And it uses these incredibly powerful AI language models to guide the process. Okay, so unpack that a little for us. What exactly is AlphaVolve fundamentally? So according to the report, they define AlphaVolve as an AI-driven coding agent. Its whole purpose is general algorithm discovery and optimization. They unveiled it publicly in May 2025. And the main idea is treating algorithm design, which is super complex, right? Treating it like an automated search task. It looks for better ways to solve problems by um, iteratively improving potential solutions like evolution, but for code. And they position it as a pretty significant step for AI tackling really hard problems in math and computing, problems that have been around for ages. So it's not just taking my instructions and spitting out code, like uh, some of the coding assistants we see. It's not really trying to invent better ways, mm. find more efficient code. Exactly. That's the key distinction. And that's where its roots in evolutionary computation come in. This field, you know, it's been around for decades, it mimics biology. You have a population of solutions and you improve them iteratively through things like selection, keeping the best ones, mutation, introducing small changes, and recombination, mixing parts of good solutions. Think of those classic genetic algorithms from the 80s, 90s. This right. builds on that foundation. Like Darwin for code. Okay, but here's the really modern twist, right? How do the big AI models, the LLMs, fit into this? Ah, yes. That's AlphaVolve's uh, secret sauce, if you will. Instead of just random mutations or simple predefined rules for changing the code, it uses large language models, specifically DeepMind's Gemini models, to generate intelligent mutations and recombinations. Uh, okay, so the LLMs bring the creativity, the coding knowledge. Right, right, right. They suggest changes that actually make sense. Mm, precisely. The Gemini models, trained on just vast amounts of code and text, they propose meaningful changes, ways to combine successful bits of code. But it's not just the LLMs dreaming things up. There's this crucial component, automated evaluators. They act like the environment in natural selection. They run the code, they score it based on, say, speed or correctness. So only the programs that actually perform well survive and get to influence the next generation. It's this loop. LLM proposes evaluator tests. That makes a lot of sense. And how does this connect to DeepMind's other alpha systems? Yeah. We know AlphaGo, AlphaFold, AlphaDev, AlphaCode. Where does AlphaVolve fit in that family tree? Yeah, it's definitely positioned as the next evolution, excuse the pun, in that lineage. You're right. AlphaGo for games, AlphaFold for proteins, revolutionary stuff. AlphaDev used reinforcement learning for sorting algorithms. AlphaTensor was specialized for matrix multiplication. AlphaCode used LLMs for competitive programming challenges. AlphaVolve builds on all that, especially things like FunSearch, which used evolutionary methods for math. But the key difference highlighted in the report is its aim for general purpose algorithm design. It's not tied to one specific domain. They quote someone saying it's the first successful demonstration of new discoveries based on general purpose LLMs. It's a move towards more flexible, inventive AI. OK, let's get a bit more granular then. Can you walk us through the architecture? How do the LLMs and the evolution process actually work together step by step? Sure. The whole system is built around that generate test loop. It starts with the problem definition. So. You, the user, define the problem you want an algorithm for, and crucially, you provide an evaluation function. That's basically code that takes any candidate program AlphaVolve creates and scores it. Is it fast, accurate, use little memory, 
whatever matters for your problem. So the evaluator defines what good means. Exactly, that's the target. Then you have the prompt sampler and the Gemini LLMs. They actually use an ensemble, a team of Gemini models. They mention Gemini Flash, which is faster, good for generating lots of ideas quickly, you know, breath. And they use Gemini Pro, which is more powerful for digging deeper, generating higher quality, more refined suggestions, depth. So Flash for brainstorming, Pro for polishing. Kinda, yeah. And the prompt they feed these models isn't just the problem description. It includes context, like the best code found so far, to steer them in promising directions. This leads to program generation. The LLMs output new candidate programs, the offspring, and because they're trained on code, they tend to suggest sensible structures, not just random characters. Okay, makes sense. Then the critical part. Absolutely critical, yeah. the automated evaluators. Every single candidate program gets run and checked automatically. First, for correctness, does it actually work? Usually against test cases. If not, it's often just thrown out. If it's correct, then they measure its performance using that evaluation function the user provided. Speed, efficiency, whatever. This gives an objective score. And it's highly scalable that they can test thousands of these variations in parallel. For some things, like hardware design, they even mention using formal verification mathematically proving correctness, which is a really high bar. Wow. All the valid programs and their scores get stored in the program's database. That's the evolving population of solutions. And finally, you have the evolutionary algorithm loop. The system picks the top performers from the database. It then uses the LLMs again to generate new candidates based on these winners, either through recombination, mixing ideas from several good ones, or mutation, intelligently tweaking a single good one. The report mentions an example like 15 successive mutations applied to fine tune a complex part of an algorithm. And this loop, generate, evaluate, select, repeat, just keeps going until it hits a target or you know runs out of time or budget. Okay, so Flash throws out ideas, Pro refines the best, the evaluator is the tough judge cutting the weak ones, all cycling round and round. That's a great analogy. That dual model approach really balances exploration, finding totally new things with exploitation, making the good things even better. And this architecture, according to the report, enables some really interesting capabilities, like autonomous code base evolution. It's not just tweaking tiny functions. It can evolve significant chunks of algorithms, coordinating changes across different pieces. Right. Yeah. The automated verification is key for trust. It tackles the AI hallucination problem head on by rigorously checking the code. That's vital. It handles complexity and scale much better than older methods, thanks to Gemini and parallel processing. And as you said, that ensemble creativity from using both Flash and Pro seems very effective. So it really does sound more like an intelligent agent actively searching and improving, not just a code generator. Exactly. It has that autonomous feel driving towards the goal set by the evaluator. All right, let's get to the results then, the impactful results mentioned. Has this system actually done anything impressive yet? What does this mean in practice? Oh, absolutely. And this is key for, you know, thinking about business value. The report details specific achievements inside Google. One big one, data center optimization. It discovered a completely new scheduling heuristic for Google's Borg system. Borg. That's Google's massive internal system for managing all their servers, allocating jobs across their data centers, right? Yeah. That's the one, basically the brain of their infrastructure. And this new heuristic, a kind of smart rule for decision making, is described as simple yet remarkably effective. Hmm? The impact. Get this. It recovers about 0.7% of Google's entire worldwide compute capacity. Wow. Okay, 0.7% sounds tiny, but at Google's scale, that must be thousands, maybe tens of thousands of servers worth of capacity freed up or used better. Precisely. That translates directly into huge cost savings, less hardware needed, less energy used, and more throughput, getting more done. And notably, the report says this AlphaVol solution outperformed a previous approach they had found using deep reinforcement learning. Plus, the output was readable code engineers could actually deploy. Okay, that's compelling. What else? Chip design. It optimized part of Google's own AI chip, the TPU. It suggested rewriting a section in Verilog, that's the language chip designers use, which eliminated unnecessary bits in a circuit. So it's generating hardware code directly. That's yeah. not something you hear about every day. Right. Shows its versatility. They say this change is being integrated into their next-gen TPUs, making the hardware itself more efficient. Incredible. Then there's AI model training. It found optimizations in the code used for training large models. One key matrix operation was sped up by 23%. And the knock-on effect of that 23%. It helped cut the overall training time for their Gemini models by 1%. Now, when a single training run costs millions and takes months, saving 1% is a very big deal. 
financially and in getting models out faster. It also sped up the already highly optimized flash attention algorithm by up to 32.5%, which helps make AI inference faster for users. Okay, these are serious practical wins. And then there's the pure science stuff, advanced mathematics. It made actual theoretical breakthroughs. It discovered a new algorithm for multiplying two four by four complex matrices using only 48 scalar multiplications. The previous record was 49, set by Strassen's algorithm back in 1969, a 50-year-old record. Hold on. It beat a 50-year-old human-discovered mathematical record. Tips. Seriously. Seriously. That's a major theoretical advance found by AI. It also improved the best-known results for about 20% of over 50 other open math problems they tested it on. Okay, these results are specific, they're quantified, and they span data centers, chip design, AI training, and pure math. Very impressive. Which brings up the comparison question again. How does AlphaVolve really differ from, say, Alpha Code or even something like GitHub Copilot that many developers use? What makes it unique? That's a really important distinction to make, especially with all the AI coding tools out there now. So compared to specialized AIs like AlphaTensor, which was built just for matrix multiplication, AlphaVolve is designed to be general purpose. But interestingly, it actually beat AlphaTensor on its own specific task, that 4x4 matrix problem that shows its power and flexibility. Compared to traditional genetic programming, the older evolutionary methods, the big difference is the LLMs. AlphaVolve makes semantically meaningful changes. It understands the code's purpose, more or less. Old GPE often made more random syntax level changes. That lets AlphaVolve handle much more complex code, like the Borg scheduler or tricky math that GP struggled with. It's a real hybrid. Right, the intelligence comes from the LLM. Exactly. Versus reinforcement learning, like in AlphaDev. Well, AlphaVolve's evolutionary approach actually beat a prior RL solution for that big data center scheduling problem, suggests it might be better for some types of complex optimization. Okay, and the big one. Versus code generators like Copilot or GPT. Right, this is key. Those tools are amazing, but they often generate code in one shot, maybe with some refinement. AlphaVolve is fundamentally different because it's an iterative, closed-loop system. It writes code, yes, but then it tests it rigorously with that automated evaluator, gets a score, learns from it, and tries again, aiming for better. It doesn't just stop at, looks plausible. The evaluator ensures correctness and measured performance, which standalone LLMs can sometimes struggle with. They might hallucinate code that looks right but is flawed. AlphaVolve uses powerful LLMs like Gemini, but it adds that crucial layer of search, verification, and continuous improvement. So it's not just generating code suggestions, it's actively searching for the demonstrably best code for a specific goal, and proving it works along the way. That's a perfect summary. Its unique differentiators really are. One, that LLM enriched creativity from Gemini. Two, its generality and flexibility across domains. Three, producing human-readable outputs actual code engineers can use. And four, the demonstrated real-world impact already running in production at Google. Okay, that crystallizes it. Yeah. So let's bring it back to the listener. What's the real value proposition here for businesses? Why should executives care? The report lays out some compelling benefits that translate directly to business value. Those breakthrough performance gains we talked about. That 0.7% compute recovery is millions saved. 1% faster AI training is significant budget and time saved. Faster core algorithms mean better, cheaper products. Direct bottom line impact. Absolutely. Then there's accelerated innovation R&D speed. Cutting optimization time from weeks to days, finding solutions humans missed for decades, that speeds up your entire development cycle. Faster time to market. Cost reduction comes from compute efficiency, energy savings, and potentially freeing up highly paid engineers from tedious optimization work to focus on bigger problems. Makes sense. You get improved quality and novelty. Finding objectively better algorithms leads to better products, maybe even entirely new features that weren't feasible before. The human readable output is huge for practicality. It means you can actually integrate these solutions, trust them, maintain them. It's not a black box. That's crucial for adoption, yeah. Its broad applicability means potential benefits across many sectors anywhere performance can be measured. Logistics, finance, manufacturing, software, and finally, the potential for a real competitive edge. Discovering a novel, super efficient algorithm could be valuable IP, giving you a first mover advantage. So for executives, this looks like a new strategic lever, a way to boost efficiency and drive innovation impacting both operations and product development. Exactly. It touches both saving money and making money, potentially. It sounds almost too good. Surely there are catches. What are the big challenges or limitations here? Oh, definitely. 
It's powerful, but not magic. The report is quite clear on the challenges. A major one is the computational resources. Running thousands of iterations, constantly calling LLMs, evaluating code. It's very compute intensive. It costs money and energy. Not cheap to run then. Not at all. And perhaps the most critical bottleneck they mention is the quality of the evaluators. Remember, AlphaVolve optimizes exactly what you tell it to measure. If your evaluation function is flawed or easy to game, the system might find a clever way to get a high score without actually solving the real problem well. Garbage in, garbage out. Designing really good evaluators is hard and becomes the new challenge. That makes sense. The goal needs to be defined perfectly. Precisely. There are also domain constraints. It excels where goals are clear and measurable. Subjective goals, or safety-critical systems needing absolute guarantees beyond testing, are much harder. It often needs initial human input, too. It doesn't always start from a completely blank page. Giving it a decent starting point or some guidance can make the search way more efficient. Scalability is still a challenge for extremely large, tangled code bases. It seems best right now for optimizing specific, well-defined components or algorithms, and you still worry about bugs and unintended solutions. Even verified code can have bugs in corner cases. The AI might find solutions that are technically correct, but perhaps brittle or hard for humans to maintain. Verification adds complexity. Okay, so it's powerful, resource-hungry, and critically dependent on how well you define success through that evaluator. What does this mean practically for an organization wanting to use it? What are the operational concerns? Right, that leads to the implications for the enterprise. How do you actually navigate this? First, it probably needs to be seen as a new C-suite tool. It's strategic. Leaders need to identify potential high-value optimization targets. You need to think about operational benefits and ROI. Can you quantify the potential savings or performance gains in your specific context? Build the business case. Exactly. Then adoption strategies. Right now, it's not off-the-shelf software, so options might be partnering with providers like DeepMind, if possible, maybe developing some internal expertise, perhaps focusing first on getting really good at building those evaluators for your key problems. Phased integration, starting small, seems wise. In the people side, does it replace engineers? The report suggests it augments engineers, it doesn't replace them. It handles the painstaking optimization, freeing up humans for higher level design, problem definition, and validating the results. So it's about human talent and culture, reskilling teams to collaborate with AI, to curate its outputs, and definitely governance and risk. How do you test and validate AI-generated code? What are the ethical guardrails if you apply it in sensitive areas? Who owns the IP for a discovered algorithm? These need careful thought. So a very holistic approach is needed tech, people, process, governance. Hmm. Looking further out, what does the report suggest about the future? Where could this go in, say, three, five years? They point to a few key trends. Expect more powerful AIs to drive this further. Better LLMs, maybe integrating more reasoning, could lead to things like AI optimizing AI, truly automated machine learning, or auto ML 2.0. AI improving itself. Potentially. We'll likely see wider adoption in tooling, maybe algorithm optimization as a service from cloud vendors, more mature open source frameworks, easier interfaces, perhaps even systems doing continuous optimization in the background. Expect cross-disciplinary impact. We could see AI scientists using this to evolve algorithms in drug discovery, material science, engineering design, optimizing real-time systems like networks or cybersecurity defenses. So beyond just software engineering. Much broader and probably more hybrid human AI approaches, Centaur teams, where human experts guide the AI's powerful search capabilities. This will raise new questions about IP, business models, maybe even education. So this kind of tech could become a standard part of the toolkit across many fields, maybe even leading to systems that continuously improve themselves. That seems to be the disruptive potential, yes. AI shifting from just using algorithms to inventing and perfecting them. Automating a very high-level form of intellectual work. The idea of self-optimizing systems becoming more common. And that compounding effect of AI improving AI, it points to potentially rapid acceleration. So in conclusion, AlphaVolve really demonstrates a new paradigm. For enterprises, it's a signal, a call to action maybe. Educate teams, identify opportunities, perhaps experiment cautiously, and definitely factor this potential into long-term strategy. The race seems to be on and the algorithms themselves are evolving. Wow. We've certainly taken a deep dive into AlphaVolve today. We've looked at how it blends LLMs and evolution. It's really impressive results from data centers all the way to pure math, yeah. how it stands apart, the value it offers, but also the very real challenges and what it might mean for the future of R&D and how businesses operate.
Yeah, the core idea, AI inventing and optimizing algorithms, feels like a fundamental shift. It promises huge gains in efficiency and innovation. But it definitely requires careful management, smart evaluation design, and a strategic view on adoption. It's not plug and play. It certainly gives you something to think about. Oh. If AI can now invent better algorithms for us, what does that free us up as humans to discover and create next? Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.